wanted to share my thoughts on a recent study that happened with DMT on healthy volunteers. So they basically used EEG and fMRIs to study what goes on in the actual brain. But I won't go into details of what was going on with that stuff. I want to focus more on what they were studying with the onset of the visuals and as well as the duration. Because amazingly enough, they had the volunteers actually draw what they were seeing during the experience. I should say afterwards they would they would ask them to draw it and it would they would ask them to draw one from like a low dose to a high dose so you got like a a good range of examples of what is depicted simple visual imagery the most noticeable things reported everybody saw geometrical patterns at one point or another uh, also the colorful and the you know the moving aspect of these patterns were quite mentioned were commonly mentioned so here are some examples, um, geometric patterns, lattices, um, it's another subject, and the medium dose, and the high dose. So this is geometric patterns in, in three different doses. This is the low dose, the medium dose, and the high dose. And you can see the differences of color and uh, suggestive uh, kinetic elements, you know, like the patterns actually moving. In terms of complex imagery, uh, the, the most <laughs> noticeable things mentioned was this idea of a uh, reference, a familiar reference something that people knew about and that somehow came up in the experience, uh, the fact that there were meaningful uh, percepts that people were experiencing, and also the very high level of detail was commonly mentioned. Uh, so here you can see in the medium dose, the transition from this kind of like uh, geometric patterns into more stable sort of objects, complex imagery, um, this Fabry JX, which very, very detailed aspects a participant experienced. Also mentioned was the sense of being transported into a different space. Also this otherworldly quality uh, being enhanced. Uh, um, also the sense of reality being more real than real, if you will, were also commonly mentioned. So these results to me were incredible, but also not really surprising because the style and imagery looked very similar to, this, to the kinds of things that I was drawing when I first got into DMT and was drawing my visions. So when some of my friends described what I was drawing, a lot of them would use words like beyond, like it's sort of expressing some other realm or higher dimension of some sort. And I find it interesting that these artworks as well also depict that type of style. And I don't really know how to describe that. It's, it's otherworldly, but it hints to extra dimensions or, or something that's composed of geometry and a lot of complexity. It was like traveling towards an eye, but a very benign eye, like some sort of bubble eye with geometric action going on. I had this brief sense of being drawn towards it and being quite, quite conscious. It was a challenging, but at the same time, it felt like quite comfortable loss of control, kind of giving yourself to, onto something else. It's interesting that they also have tribal and hieroglyphic imagery as well. In this case, in the high dose, I was then being shown a blackboard and there are these sort of entities saying, have a look at this, have a look at this. It's like a playpen where I'm being watched. I also see hieroglyphic language very much in the center of my vision. So a classic sort of like DMT entity encounter. I think Terence McKenna talked about that stuff being the archaic archetype of it. And it's just interesting that that also was a big theme in what I was seeing and what I was drawing. This study, to me at least, clearly shows that DMT is sort of like a catalyst to an enhancement in creativity. So when they start out drawing it, they get like the style, and then once you hone the skill, it sort of advances into very interesting things.
I found it very interesting that one of the imagery they described the Fabergé egg because that was something that I also had the same sort of feeling to, to what I was drawing as well and, and a while ago I made a picture with my drawing and, and cut it out to, to look like a Fabergé. So I like I like to think about where these kinds of archetypes emerge from because they seem to be consistent among all of us based on these studies and not to mention the jester archetype that seems to occur a lot based on the reports. So it's I often try to think about if there's a if there's a meaning to it or if there's a purpose to it because it it seems very very strange that all of this would just be some sort of meaningless random event. It's definitely something that can't be brushed off as meaningless as a dream because even dreams have meaning because they they show a I heard one theory that it's supposed to train you for certain events that happen in your real life so you know how to handle them. Like, to me, it always thought that we were somehow tapping into this world and it's, it's changing with our own psyche. And as we evolve, this place evolves. So in the future, I think that, you know, more studies like this should be done because I think that they show a lot about what this place could be to us and, you know, what kind of benefits we can receive from it and my theory would be creativity so that's all I really wanted to share about this one so I hope you guys thought that was interesting